In this video, I'll demonstrate how to take a RISA 3D model uh, and reactions over into RISA connection for design of the connections. So RISA 3D will automatically integrate with RISA connection if you have that authorized on your, your license. So when we look at the global parameters, if we go up to the global parameters under codes, we'll see that there's a hot rolled steel section and right below that there's a RISA connection section. So these two codes would be best off if they were the same so that we can uh, use the same code in RISA 3D, take all the load combinations that we design here in RISA 3D over to RISA connection. So I have my mine set to ASD design. When I say OK, I can look over on the load combinations spreadsheet and I have a series of load combinations already built in. And if we go to the design tab, I can see that my hot rolled sections are being designed as well as RISA connection a checkbox is turned on here. So all of these load combinations are going to be sent over to RISA Connection. So closing that out, I can now take a look at the model itself. So this is going to be a basic frame. Uh, we've got some moment connections as well as we've got some braces here. So we're doing some brace frames here. Um, so to do this, what we need to do is go ahead and define the connections. So I'm going to show the pins so we see what we're looking at here. Some of these are pinned ends, some of them are fixed. And what we see in the data entry toolbar is a connection rule. And in the connection rules, when we look through it, we have a long list of different connections that are defaulted in the program. You can see I've added one here already at the bottom, and that one we can call direct weld. That one's going to be a direct weld for the column to beam direct weld moment here. What you can do is you can add to any of these here. You'll see we've just selected a few as the default, but there's a wide variety of other ones you can add there. You know, I'm including splices and um, lots of other things that we have we don't have in the default. Now the also notice that the beam connection and the column grid connection, if it's applicable, you're able to change whether it's beamed, uh, bolted, excuse me, or welded. So you can choose that between those two here in Risa uh, 3D. This can control that. So what I'll do is I'm going to close this and there's a couple ways to define the end connection of your connection here in Risa 3D. Uh, the first and easiest way is you're just doing a couple connections. It's just to double click on the member, go over to instead of the uh, general tab when you first open it, pop over to the end releases here tab and you'll see the section called Risa connection. So in this one we can tell the program we want to do a direct weld um, end release here. So if I go down to the direct weld on both sides I can see it'll, I'm going to say OK, and it's easiest to verify that, that you've made the change by turning on the connection rule. So up here you can see I can turn on the end connection rules, and I see that I made that connection there. So it says direct weld on it. I can do that several times. I can go around the structure, and wherever I'm going to do a direct weld, I can go ahead and do that just by double clicking on the member and then setting the recent connections set to direct weld. Um, that's an easy way to do if you just have a few to do. But if you have a long list of ones, there's another way we can do that. So what I'll do is I'm going to go to the Draw New Members tab here, and I'm going to pop over to the Modify Properties. What I, in Modify Properties, you have a selection of a lot of different things you can change. But what we're interested in here is the RISA connection end rules. So if we look here at the start and the end, I can set the program here to use different types of connections. So for ours here, what we'll want to do is we're going to use the girder to beam, and we're going to say it's going to be a clip angle, and we're going to do that on both sides. And you'll notice that the use checkbox needs to be turned on and it will turn red. By doing that, I can say apply, and I'm going to apply this individually by clicking on these members. So clicking around my structure, I can just click and I get all these showing here, girder to beam clip angle. Once that one's done, we can do a couple other ones here. Um, what I want to do here is assign these diagonal braces. And if we look at the, the way we're defining these is we're basing them on the I and the J end. So it's easy to turn on the I and the J end. In this model, I have it set up so that the I and the J end here are described the end is in blue and the, the start is in red. Uh, and that's, we can see here all of my diagonal uh, braces coming in here are in the, at the end. So it makes it pretty easy for us to define those as the diagonal members. Uh, what we need for here for this brace connection is to define the brace and the beam. So if I double click on the beam, I can just define the J end to be a diagonal brace 
and we'll see that defines that as that beam location there. And I'll double click on this side and that end, we'll call that a diagonal brace. I'm going to do that at a couple other ones. And if I scroll around, I can see there's a diagonal brace there, a diagonal brace over here, and I'm going to do that a couple times more over on the other side. So once we have diagonal brace defined in all locations, it's going to define all of those around the structure. And I'll go one more time here. And then we will now start defining some of the other locations. So ones we, we missed here are some of these uh, shear, if we turn off the I, the N, I and the J ends, I'm going to show you here, we've got a pinned release. So if I look at the pinned only here release, we're doing a, a pin connection to this column. So what I'm going to do there is I'm going to call that a column to beam clip angle. So double click on that side. We already have the other side defined as a diagonal brace. This one I'm going to call a column to beam clip angle. And we've got that one right there. And we want the other side the same way. So column to beam clip angle. And that one's going to be just a shear connection. If we look on the other side, let's just do for a variety. I'm going to say column to beam shear tab. So it's going to be the similar on the same side, but it's going to have a shear tab. So we see a, a variety of different things. If we look back on the rules here. We've defined all of our connections around the top of the structure. So now we're ready to take this over to Teresa Connection. So what we can do is solve the model, solve a batch solution. It's going to run through all the different load combinations and then we're ready to take it over. Uh, using the director button at the top right corner, we go and click director, and then we say reset connection. That sends over to reset connection and launches open reset connection for us. Every single connection I've defined comes across without a problem. You see they're grouped together based on the type of connection that you're using. So we see here the column to beam clip angles are all grouped together, column to beam shear tabs, my diagonal braces. I can click on any one of these and you'll see the different connections within them. Or we can go back to the group level and look at it in the group level. So we click on the diagonal brace and I see that that's a connection here is one diagonal brace. Otherwise I can go back to the, the, the whole project and look at it on a project level. So first thing I do in here is I solve the whole project. So I click on solve all connections and it runs through the connections and solves every single one. And you can see it's, it's applying all the loads that we applied in Risa 3D and it's running through. And we can see as soon as it runs through, it gives us a green pass or a red fail. So I scroll down a little bit and I can see that it's, a, it's passing most of them, but it's failing just one connection type here, the column to beam shear tab. That's okay. Let's go ahead and just see how, what happens if we take this back to Risa 3D. So I'm going to save the model. I'm going to say file export to connection results to Risa, and that's going over to Risa 3D. And then it launches back over to Risa 3D, and I get a spreadsheet showing me the results of every single connection that I sent over. It tells me the maximum unity check. It tells me the governing load check, a load combination that it sent, and which ones we're controlling. And I see here that it's failing those two. And it's just over failing there. It's just 1.041. So it's just slightly over. But it is important just to see that those two fail. So we'd want to make go back and pay attention to them. But we also can do is take a look at the model here. And we can show that graphically. So if I go back to this end, end releases here, we can see we can show it as a connection results. And then I get a color coded green versus red. So it tells me the actual code check of each connection and then we see those two failures I had previously. So those are now still failing but it shows us nice graphical way of seeing where things are failing. So now what I'll do since I've already got a solution present I'm just going to pop back over to Reset Connection. It's going to nothing's really changed but as we go back to Reset Connection we can come over and what we see now is that those two are failing. Let's take address those two. So if we look a little closer we cl click on a connection I can see the reports here and it tells me what's failing. So it's give, have some information here based on some failures. And what's failing here shows me that it's the bolt to shear at the beam. So the bolt to shear shows me that I have to address the number of bolts, either increasing the area of the bolt, increasing the number of bolts. And in this connection, it doesn't look like I have much room to put another bolt in. But what I could do is add, increase the size of that bolt for it to pass. 
So I could do this on a connection by connection basis, but what I want to show you here is if I go to the grouping, so I go to the header of the group, I can then go to the, the specific beam bolts, and instead of using three quarter inch bolts, I can tell the program to increase that up to seven and eight inch bolts. It clears the results, and then I can run, so it now applied that for both of my connections. Whatever was in that group just got that increased number of uh, bolt uh, size, and I can run that by saying solve the group, uh, so it checks it one more time, and now it shows me that it's only at 80% there. So I'm, I am now passing for these two, these two connections. So I can save that one more time, say File, Export to Reset 3D, and it sends it over to Reset 3D. Reset 3D says, okay, we're going to clear the results. Would you like to do that? And I said, yep. I'm going to clear those results, and now I'm going to look back on my model, and as I look at it, it shows me now that the results are now green everywhere. So I have passing results. I can go back and take a look at what type of rules those were, but I also can review how the results are. If you want to take a look at the results in those spreadsheets, they are also sitting on the results toolbar under connection results, and you can see some information there. Also, if you're here in this, this spreadsheet, this is a great way to see a consolidated just overview of what's happening, but you can also jump into back into the, each one of these results by clicking on the detail results for connect, current connection, and it will take you directly back to Reset Connection and that specific connection. And that concludes this video.